Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange reporting for the Media Speaks as we launch into today's show. Like nine million articles to get to today. So we're just going to launch right into them, uh, one after the other after the other. Uh, the first one I want to get to here is uh, Lawsuit. Cops put a bag on a woman's head, strap her to chair, and choke her to draw blood for a Nazi test. Do you believe that? Good, because it wasn't for Nazis. It was for a DUI test. It's this country. Are you mad? When I said Nazi, you believed it, didn't you? Didn't you? That is our country that I'm speaking about. And you're damn straight this is my leadoff story. And I don't care if you're one of those people in that idiot group that don't like what I say. All that means is I'm right and you're wrong. Steve Watson, Infowars.com. A woman is suing a host of parties after it emerged that cops in Austin, Texas forcibly took her blood for a DUI test in a scene that sounds like something that would occur at Guantanamo Bay prison camps, or as I would say, Nazi Germany. So, you don't like the way I talk. Oh, you don't like my set. You don't like the video quality. Do I care? Do you wonder even, do you even understand what is happening to your own country? Do you understand that it doesn't matter if everybody in the known universe hates me, that I am reporting on something that affects the people that are hating me? I am dead serious here. How could anybody with a thinking part of their brain possibly be against what I am saying here? And what I am saying is that this is utter BS. Carolyn Calloway was arrested by a police officer after she refused to take a breath test during a routine traffic stop. Ms. Calloway was taken directly to the Travis County Jail where the shocking events unfolded. Calloway's attorney told reporters the Courthouse News that despite only passive and verbal resistance, she was taken to a small padded room, like she was a nutcase, where she was surrounded by officers and strapped into the chair with her legs, wrists, and shoulders restrained. Do you realize that this was the way that they treated the Jews in Nazi Germany? Do you realize that this is how they treated Christians in ancient Rome? Do you realize that this is how every nasty regime treats its fellow people? Or are you just part of a group that notices that I don't make eye contact, even though I'm trying to talk into two cameras at one time and read a quote? Maybe you're too busy deciding whether or not you like my hair. Oh, my tattoo looks so unprofessional. Oh, I'm such a gay guy. You know what? I ain't gay at all. And I don't care if you think I am. What I care about is trying to tell people what is going on in the world around them, regardless of what they may or may not think of me. So eat it. All the hood did was cause Calloway to panic further as she could not see what was happening. So they put a hood on this woman's head for no reason at all because they said it was going to take her anxiety away. A contracted nurse who should be disbarred from the medical profession was on hand to perform the blood draw with a hooded woman terrified, trembling, but according to the complaint, the needle popped out because Ms. Calloway's shaking and blood is spewed on into the officers, who had no business bothering her to begin with. Defendants continued to abuse, determined, uh, and to take Mrs. Calloway's blood, excuse me. In order to stop Ms. Calloway from trembling, one of the officers used a chokehold pressure point on her neck until her body went limp, the complaint further notices. Let me tell you something. I took martial arts long enough to know how to defend myself. I'm not afraid if someone steps up to me. Am I a master? No. If you're a master, you're probably going to kill me. If you're better than average, you're probably going to kill me. But the point is, I know how to defend myself. And to learn it, 
God bless Master Blackwell at Victory Asian Arts. Free shout out. Um, I've been choked out because there are times that, you know, you're going for one move and somebody goes for another move and you end up in a chokehold. Well, it's happened to me. And I've been choked to the point where I had to tap and uh, re redo, the, uh, redo the fight. It's how you learn. It's what they do in martial arts schools. Um, <clears throat> it does not make you less calm to be choked out. That is coming from somebody who has been choked out. Let me tell you what. It is not an enjoyable experience. And I know it's shocking to believe, but it's not going to make you less calm. Freaking morons, man. Defendant Ramsey Graham stabbed Miss Calloway again while Miss Calloway was limp. After her body went limp from the terror. And it continues. When the officer released her neck, Miss Calloway gasped for air. She could not see because there was a bag over her head like Guantanamo freaking Bay. But she felt the weight of a boot on the crook of her arm, which, along with the rest of her body, was still tied to the chair. Well, may maybe the way I speak makes this story somehow a little bit less relevant. Right? Injuries sustained by Callaway during the ordeal included nerve damage and severe bruising most prominently on her neck as a result of the choking at the hands of the cops. She said that she is also suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. I bet she is after that. Callaway was charged with DWI based on blood test results, but the lawsuit outlines that the results are likely inaccurate owing to the circumstances. Uh, for those of you that don't know, adrenaline can actually affect your alcohol content. And look it up. I didn't make it up. Don't blame me. It's true. She is suing the city of Austin, Travis County, Austin police officers, county sheriff's officers, pro-touch nurses, and one of its employees on the grounds of unlawful search and seizure, excessive force, assault and battery, negligence and medical malpractice. God bless her every step of the way. Uh, Callaway is seeking, it says, punitive damages for emotional injuries, pain and suffering, embarrassment, humiliation, indignity, medical bills, lost wages, and legal fees, which, if I'm not mistaken, is exactly the way ancient Rome treated its uh, lesser citizens. Callaway says she is pursuing the case in order to change a government policy here and nationwide for the betterment of all citizens. This woman is a hero. Most people would have just sat down and taken it. Let's support Miss Callaway. Can we agree on that? It says, as InfoWars, where I'm quoting, has previously noted, breathalyzer tests have proven to be inaccurate in a high percentage of cases, which many factors rendering the results little more than scientific guesswork. If you question me, there is a link to it. Further research has shown that police officers often influence the results of breathalyzer tests, resulting in inaccurately high ratings, which means you get a DUI for nothing so they can get paid. Drivers are well within their rights to refuse to engage in such tests. Blood tests can also produce false high readings of alcohol levels if they are not conducted quickly and properly. It goes on that this information is important, many argue, because it means that enforced tests could provide police with self-incriminating evidence. Friends, if you're in favor of this, you need to take a real long, hard look in the mirror and ask yourself, what kind of person are you? I mean, really, did you just hear what they did to that woman? This is insanity, friends. This is the freethoughtproject.com. Man indicted for assault despite police being caught on video viciously attacking him. Now, for those of you that don't know, I am healing from what uh, was a rather dreadful snowboarding accident. This rib here, when I right, right there breathe in that far, doesn't feel very good, okay? I get what an injury like this feels like. I really do. 
you have instances where police have a chance to really, really attack somebody. I was injured. I got up off the snowboarding hill I was on to continue the story. And in my city, Officer 183 was one of the nicest, most helpful people ever. I live in Ohio, in the land of ice, snow, burr, and all things cold. And uh, he was very helpful. Sometimes you get an officer that is not as cool as Officer 183 of the Canton Police Department. And when that happens, this kind of travesty happens. Atlantic City, New Jersey, <clears throat> excuse me. A terrible injustice is transpiring in New Jersey this week as a man was just indicted for assaulting police officers after surveillance footage clearly shows one of the worst cases of police brutality ever caught on film. Connor Castanelli, 22, of Linwood, will stand trial for three charges, aggravated assault on a police officer, a third-degree crime, resisting arrest with threats or use of force or violence, also a third-degree crime, and inflicting harm on a law enforcement animal, a fourth-degree crime. So somehow you're supposed to be able to sick a dog on somebody and they're not supposed to defend themselves, for one. Uh, the incident happened in the early morning hours of June 15, 2013. Caston Lally was kicked out of the Tropicana Resort for being underage. The entire stop was caught on video after Caston Lally left the casino. Officers stopped him, questioned him, and made him empty his pockets and eventually sent him on his way. However, it goes on, after he walked away, he is seen on video yelling something at the officers. A mistake that nearly cost him his life. Now pause. Keep in mind there is the freedom of speech in this country, and it has been backed up against police officers by the Supreme Court, so please don't blame me for it. I'm simply telling you what the law of the land is, and it's fact. After a brief verbal exchange, police run up to the 20-year-old man and proceed to beat him to the point of hospitalization, just like the Nazis did. After he was on the ground, much like the Nazis did, lying on his stomach, a canine officer, which is a dog, showed up and sicked his German Shepherd on the already subdued man, apparently letting the dog tear his neck apart is a punishable offense, as one of the charges that he faces is inflicting harm on a law enforcement animal. In other words, the dog bit him and he kicked the dog's ass, which you can't blame him for. The canine officer, Swine Sterling Wheaton, has been named in at least six other lawsuits. The lawsuit filed in 2013, and his family makes this now the seventh. Now that Castellalli has been indicted for these ridiculous charges, the officers are subsequently cleared on the allegations of excessive force. Only in America! We find ourselves in backwards times here in 21st century America, it says. In today's society, a man can be beaten and maimed to the point of needing hundreds of stitches and put back together... And the six people who did this to him are said to be the victims. This is a shameful situation indeed. I couldn't agree more, guys. Go look up the video. It's at thefreethoughtproject.com. I'm moving on. I couldn't resist this from Daily Mail. Uh, ICE is such wonderful people. Was Jordanian pilot burned alive after a sick Twitter campaign among ISIS supporters to name the method of his death? This is messed up. Basically, ISIS captured a Jordanian pilot and left it up to their sick minions exactly how he was going to be killed. And they burnt the man alive inside of a cage and smashed him with a bulldozer. Now, these people of the religion of peace, Islam, that did this, they are wondering why we do not accept Sharia law. Now, this is not an attack on regular Muslims. I'm a Christian. Regular Muslims, you are like me. I'm a regular Christian. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the, uh, the, the nutcases here. 
We don't write Sharia law because we're not Islamic. We don't want to be Islamic. And the only way you can make us become Islamic is to terrify us into it because we think you suck and we think your extreme indoctrination and uh, viewpoints of your religion suck and we think that all of you can go to hell. That is why you can only get people to join your religion if you're a nutcase or if you threaten us. Other than that, we all tell you to go to hell. That's the simple truth. I'm being dead honest here, and this is why. Thousands of ISIS supporters took to Twitter in the days after Jordanian pilot Moaz al kashaba was captured to suggest sick methods of execution including the two techniques that ultimately resulted in his death. It emerged today. Yeah, because uh, fascist Islamists can only do things that uh, bring down the lowest common denominator of all man's hu of all humanity. Uh, Kasaba has been, uh, was seen, excuse me, being burnt alive before being run over by a bulldozer in a 22-minute long video released by the terror group yesterday in which the level of barbarism and brutality sunk to new lows, even by ISIS-depraved standards. The method of murder raises the chilling prospect that ISIS may have been influenced by the Twitter campaign, which used the Arabic hashtag suggest a way to kill Jordanian pilot pig to lessen ideas from the terror group's supporters. Uh, I, what's amazing to me is the, the feminists in this. They're not sticking up for this man's wife. They're not sticking up for all of the pain she's in. Why? Well, because it's not politically correct to do so, right? In the days after Kasaba's capture, it says, which occurred on December 24th, Christmas Eve, no less, which doesn't mean anything to these animals, when his F-16 fighter jet suffered mechanical problems and crash-landed close to ISIS Syrian stronghold, and de facto capital Raqqa, militants used Twitter to crowdsource ideas for his execution. And basically, they picked burning alive and smashed by a bulldozer. Why? Because that's what pieces of human filth do when they can't think of anything else to do. And I'm dead serious. I'm not talking about your average, average Islamist, because your average Islamist is agreeing with me right now. But these crazy Sharia jihadi nutcases know that there's only one way they can get anybody to join them, and that is to terrify them into it, because the rest of us are telling them quite concisely to go to hell. Um, Finance.yahoo.com. Sheriffs want popular police tracking app disabled. Eh. It says sheriffs are campaigning to pressure Google Inc. to turn off a feature on its Waze traffic software, W-A-Z, that warns drivers when police are nearby. They say one of the technology industry's most popular mobile apps could put officers' lives in danger. How about this? Why don't you filthy sons of bitches quit pulling people over for nothing? Why don't you quit giving low-level DUIs? By that, I mean first tier, not two or three. Why don't you quit spying on us? And maybe we, in turn, will quit spying on you. Otherwise, you can get on all fours, suck a fart out of my rear end, and rate the taste on Yelp! Wage, Waze, excuse me, which Google purchased for $966 million in 2013, is a combination of GPS navigation and social networking. 50 million users in 200 countries turn to the free service for real-time traffic guidance and warnings about nearby congestions, car accidents, speed traps, which should be illegal, and traffic cameras. So basically, I'm asking two things. I am asking here at 4.20 in the morning. Yes, I said it. I am asking here at 4.20 in the morning for you all to download Waze so that the police cannot obliterate your Fourth Amendment right. And I'm also asking for other users to please create things like Waze, give them out freely to as many people as humanly possible, and help protect what we know is our Fourth 
Amendment, right? If you don't know what the Fourth Amendment, Fourth Amendment is, look it up and you'll see that I'm correct. Friends, you are listening to the correct views. I got uh, I got four more stories to get to actually, so please don't zone out on me. I just wanted to mention real quick, if I could, that uh, Mike McLaughlin writes some of the best vampire fiction you've ever read. Do I have any horror readers in my crowd? If I do, I'm telling you, I have the writer for you. Look up Mike McLaughlin on Facebook.com. Telling you heard about it from the correct views and be delighted that you did so. Guys, next story that I'm getting to, it's brought to you by Change Transportation. If you are in Canton, Ohio, or within a 50-mile radius thereof, look up uh, Change Transportation, and uh, you'll be glad you did. He price matches taxi fares. He's not technically a taxi company. He's a transportation company. Call him. Tell Kenny you heard about him on the correct views. Guys, Reuters.com, for those of you that say that I don't give any sources in certain groups, Washington State Attorney General seeks to raise the smoking age to 21. Now, Christelle, my loving behind-the-scenes queen, will tell you up front that if you smoke, I think if you smoke cigarettes, you are one of the stupid people in the world. You're a moron. You're an idiot. You don't even get high from it, for crying out loud. You poison yourself without any of the fun. However, it is your right to do whatever you want with your body. And you certainly don't need to answer to me. It's between you and God. If you want to be an idiot, it's between you and God. It is not, not a decision that needs to be made by the federal government. This is where I come out on the side of smokers. Washington State's top lawyer was set to unveil legislation on Wednesday seeking to raise the legal smoking age to 21 from 18 in a move that could make the first state to become such a threshold. Let me ask you something. Weed is illegal. Do you think anybody in Washington might smoke weed even though it's illegal? All this is going to do is make it more inviting for them to do it. Have these people never been teenagers? Of course they have. The question is rhetorical. They're doing this to get votes. More people are going to smoke because of this, not less. Attorney General Bob Ferguson will announce the bill later on Wednesday in Olympia, the state capitol, his office said. The drive behind this is the health and well-being of our youth in the state of Washington. It's for the children. A spokesman, Peter LaVille, said uh, some other jurisdictions have raised the age and seen real impact on youth smoking rates. No, all you've seen are youth smoking behind your back because it's illegal, because now they're doing it and they're being more careful about it because education works. Most of you listening to my voice did not shoot heroin today, not because the government told you not to, but because you know that it's a boneheaded idea. That is the way you get the numbers to go down. What they are doing is the way that you get the numbers to go up. That is why we're libertarian. Friends, uh, this is also uh, Prevent Disease by Marco Torres. It's time to stop perpetuating the myth that sunlight causes cancer. This is simply one of the most interesting articles I've come come apart in a long time. I was very happy to see this. An individual's view of health determinants is directly correlated to their sources and how they process information. Regardless of its accuracy, when something is repeated a sufficient number of times, people will start to believe it. The cancer and sunscreen industries have made it their mission to convince the world that sunlight is a primary cause of skin cancer, when in fact it has been shown to prevent it. In fact, considerable evidence shows that blocking the sun's rays from reaching our skin with, for example, sunscreen, significantly decreases our uptake of vitamin D levels, which to high morality, critical illness, mental illness disorders, and cancers itself. Now, I found this rather interesting because I used to date 
a, uh, a, a, a lovely lady, hello, shout out to Lauren, who was so white as to make me look like an African American. And I'm using an analogy, I'm not being racist, come on, have a sense of humor or tune out. I look like a brother, okay? The amount of parabens, look up parabens if you don't know what I'm talking about, that she brought into her body by blocking the sun was very likely more harmful than the, the sun itself. Uh, my mother was whiter than the wall. See this wall here that I'm covering up? That wall. White. But you, you, it's better off to be a little warm and cover yourself than it is to bring these sort of parabens into your body. And again, if you don't know what that is, you need to look it up before you question me on it. I'm mentioning this because this article, and you can look it up at, uh, I gave you the article, it's at InfoWars. The trouble is, a little bit of sun is good. What I recommend personally is getting some sun, just a little bit darker than they say that you should, maybe even a light red, and then either wear a long sleeve shirt or use an all organic sunblock, which is not going to be as strong as the others. If that doesn't work for you, then you're going to have to wear a few more clothes, but that's much better for you than what I'm about to read here. It says the sun, uh, my poor, I keep hitting this table, people live are getting bonk, 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 sorry. The southern hemisphere is currently experiencing record temperatures, rising the mercury to levels many regions have never experienced. Some climatologists have stated that the trend will continue in the northern hemisphere come July. That would be our summertime for you Kesha fans. With these hot temperatures come extreme warnings from public health officials to slather on the sunscreen to prevent skin cancer and specifically protect us from melanoma. Is melanoma def deadly? It definitely can be. There are more than 70,000 cases in the U.S. alone every year, and almost 10,000 people will die of the disease yearly. Melanoma accounts for less than 2% of skin cancer cases, however, but the vast majority of skin cancer deaths. So before anybody says that I'm downplaying skin cancer, does it sound like I down uh, downplayed skin cancer, Christelle? Not at all. All right. One of the seven most common cancers in the U.S., melanoma is the only one whose incidence is increasing. Between 2000 and 2009, incidence climbed by 1.9% annually. It's also the most common form of cancer for adults between 25 to 29 years old and the second most common form of cancer for young people 15 to 29. Now, what's fascinating is the claim by public health watchdogs that almost 90% of melanomas are attributed to exposure to UV radiation from the sun. They claim that regular daily use of an SPF 15 or higher sunscreen reduces the risk of developing melanoma by 50%. Oh, really? He asks. What's interesting is how many people never stop to think about how humans survived on this planet for thousands of years, working outside for hours on end before the industrial era. There was no sunscreen. I bet there was a long sleeve shirt. There was common sense in people not getting skin cancer. Oh my, how did we ever make it, he writes, without sunscreen, drugs, and vaccines for thousands of years, and suddenly we can't survive without them at all? All of these artificial substances do not increase a healthy life expectancy. They increased a diseased life expectancy. People are far more sick and ill today than they were a century ago. Yes, they live longer, but at what expense? It says, by the way, if you haven't read the recent article, How Fear Mongers Depend on Keeping You in a State of Panic, there's a link to it, for profit, it may help to clear up any confusion on the motives moving forward. The scare tactics regarding the sun and UV rays are no exception. If sunlight does not cause skin cancer, it is your best defense against skin cancer. Now, they don't do a very good job of mentioning it in this article, so let me clarify it. A really nasty ass burn over and over and over again is going to cause you to get skin cancer. That's why I'm mentioning the importance of a long sleeve shirt. Shazam, Sparky! 
Exposure to ultraviolet B radiation and sunlight provides the mechanism for more than 90% of the vitamin D production in most individuals. Again, I told you at the beginning of the show I live in 